I've since been self-employed in the construction industry with my father and have had the pleasure of working across the entire county of Lebanon. I've served on the Jonestown Borough Council for the past 10 years, six of those as president of the council, and I'm the current, current associate vice president for the Lebanon County Voters Association. Pennsylvania is facing a number of important issues that will affect the entire population of this state over the next two to 10 years, a few of which are education reform, the Marcellus Shale formation, and state pensions. The fact is the state is overspending, overtaxing, and overregulating to the point that Pennsylvania is one of the worst climates for job creation in the nation. I look forward to hopefully discussing some of these, some of these issues this evening. I have been in office just over three years and am running for my third term as your representative in Legislative District 102. Some of my accomplishments thus far include unanimous passage in the House of House Bill 933, which would bring up to date the responsibilities of civilian security personnel at our National Guard bases, including our own Indian Town Gap. Twice I was instrumental in the passage of House Bill 169, an update to the Small Games of Chance Law, which includes my amendment to allow up to 40% of the profits realized by our fire companies with social clubs, our veterans organizations, and nonprofit civic clubs to be used for operating expenses. I was instrumental in securing H2O grants for municipalities and authorities in my district to help with the cost of federally mandated upgrades to public water and sewer systems. And I was able to get language in the bill authorizing table games to compensate East Hanover Township for the added costs of created by the close proximity of Hollywood Casino while at the same time voting against the bill. But there are many more issues that remain unresolved in state government, including a budget that's in the red by an estimated more than $1 billion, pension funds for state workers and teachers that are severely, severely underfunded, fraud of at least 14% in our welfare system, and badly needed repairs to our bridges and state highways. My caucus has put forth legislation to deal with each and every one of these issues, but the bills are not even brought to a vote in committee, much less on the House floor. It's my hope that the balance of power will change next year and that you will return me to office so that I may be part of the solution. Thank you, Representative Swunger. We'll begin our questioning portion, Jason Kern. Many frustrated Pennsylvanians think that if you lawmakers can't pass a state budget by the constitutionally mandated deadline of June 30th, your pay should be docked for every day over the deadline. Is that a worthy consideration in your opinion? Oh, I, I hardly agree. That would be my solution. Sure, we should have to forfeit pay for every day it goes over the deadline. But let's be clear that our, under Governor Rendell, our state budgets have been laid by design. This is one of the tactics he uses to bully us into capitulating to his um, overspending and taxing and, uh, and, and additional borrowing that he always puts on the table. So it's not uh, really a matter of not being able to agree as far as the, you know, the, the, the General Assembly is concerned. It's that he uses this tactic to basically get what, what he wants, uh, along with other tactics like laying off state employees and threatening that. And uh, we found out that uh, the courts told him he, can't, he couldn't do that. He couldn't uh, stop paying state employees. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that us having to forfeit our pay, and that means not getting it uh, later after the budget is passed like we do now, but forfeit it entirely. A day's pay for every day that we go over the deadline, I would agree to that 100%. Thank you, Representative Swunger. Jason Kern. I can definitely agree with that, uh, with that uh, feeling as far as uh, forfeiting, forfeiting pay until the budget is passed. Unfortunately, my concern with that is that it might, it might increase the efforts to use short-term fixes instead of actually working towards a long-term fix. But I'm fine, I'm fine with that situation. Uh, I would support... Hello, 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 hello. Hey, it's someone, okay. I would support a uh, legislation to fund the, fund the government of the previous year until a new budget is passed to uh, hopefully not deal with the same situation as we went through this past year with 100 days, 100 days late for the, for the state budget. There is significant economic importance of extracting gas from the Marcellus Shale, but there are also serious concerns about cumulative long-term consequences of the extraction process. As a legislator, how would you balance the economic importance and the ecological concerns? 
Well, there is no question that this Marcella shale formation is a gold mine for Pennsylvania from the energy from energy standpoints, job standpoints, and there are significant environmental concerns. However, I do know that the state house just just uh, passed legislation for a three-year moratorium on uh, on uh, drilling on state state uh, lands here in Pennsylvania. However. There are already currently six state agencies that regulate those that regulate drilling on state game lands, state farmland or forest lands, including the DCNR. The DCNR already has rules set up for the past 60 years of where you can drill, where you can't, where it is proper, where it is not. The EPA has given their blessing on uh, has cleared uh, uh, water fracturing water fracturing for gas extraction. And the fact is, we've had we have 1,600 oil and natural gas wells here in Pennsylvania for the past some as old as 60 years, and none are currently under remediation, and uh, and have. Well, I think uh, Marcellus Shale could be a big boom for the state of Pennsylvania, not only for individual property owners, but also for state, uh, the state by allowing drilling in state forests. There has been drilling going on in state forests for at least the past 20 years. However, it's become more prevalent and more into public limelight because of the, uh, the new uh, procedure they found that uh, you can extract the gas by drilling horizontally instead of now just going down vertically. So that's why there is an increased uh, activity from gas companies who want to uh, mine this natural gas, so to speak. Um, I did vote for the moratorium. The three-year moratorium I don't think is going to hurt anybody. I think it's going to give us some breathing room to sit back and say, okay, now, how can we do this better? There have been some mistakes made. I think DEP is doing a, a better than average job of, of watching out and monitoring these, uh, these drilling operations. But um, we need to make sure that gas companies make right what they do wrong. If they come in and they tear up roads in order to get to a drilling site, they should be required to fix what they have uh, ruined. So that is why I think the, the three-year moratorium is a good thing. If, Swanger, if a citizen's constitutional convention should ever come to fruition, what would be a state issue you'd like to see brought before the convention? Well, I'd like to see not the whole Constitution opened up, because I don't think we should be um, doing anything to our Bill of Rights, first of all. But we should, we should really concentrate on the, uh, the things that people are talking about, especially concerning the legis legislature. Should there be a reduction in the size of the legislature? Should there be term limits put in the Constitution? Should there be something specified uh, about our uh, salaries and perks? Uh, should there be, um, oh, let's see, what was, it was just on the tip of my mouth, but, um, but things that, that concern the operation of the legislature. And I think those are what, are, what uh, are most on people's minds and what I hear people say we should change. Um, redistricting, a fairer process for redistricting, which we do every 10 years after we get the census figures. Uh, there's a lot of uh, gerrymandering going on in that process. I think everybody's familiar with that term and knows what it means. We need to have a fair and impartial way to redistrict uh, after the census. So, yes, I think there are things that should be examined, things that the people are talking about, things that the people are think, think need uh, possible change, and that's what we should focus on. Thank you, Representative Swanger. Jason Curtin. I do agree with uh, Representative Swanger that Article One of the Pennsylvania Constitution should not be touched in the Constitutional Convention. However, everything else should be open. Uh, I am on record for three or four years as being in favor of a part-time legislature. I think Pennsylvania needs that. I think they should be paid at a part-time wage also, not just, and uh, not the full-time legislature we have. I am against reducing the size of the legislature. Uh, there are no reasonable reasonable uh, situations where, where it would reduce spending at the legislative level. In fact, you're, looking, you're probably looking at a smaller legislature or larger staff or to cover more people. Also, I'm very concerned about with reducing the size of the legislature as consolidating more power in the hands of less people. Uh, Pennsylvania and the United States is based on personal freedoms, and I think that would that would be a a uh, spike in the heart of that. Also, 
even though they're currently illegal according to the Pennsylvania Constitution, there could be stronger language to uh, eliminate perks, pensions, and insurance, insurance for the state legislature.